question that everyone wants to know the answer to. <laughs> what chronic illness do I have? And if you're a spoonie, if you're a chronic illness warrior, you know that there's never just one diagnosis. <laughs> Usually you end up with a whole handful of them, um, which is the case for me. And um, it's a long, long story, long journey, and I'm gonna share it with you in this video. So, hello, for those of you who are new here, who don't know me yet, my name is Rachel. I'm a certified yoga instructor, and I specialize in yoga for chronic pain and chronic illness. And this is because I live with chronic pain and chronic illness myself. Although a lot of people on the internet like to think that that's not true, or I'm faking it, or I know nothing about chronic pain or chronic illness, and therefore I'm a terrible yoga teacher, <laughs> and my classes are horrible. <laughs> um, yeah, I get comments like that on a regular basis, but um, <laughs> it used to really, really bother me in the beginning when I was like first on YouTube, when I was a total YouTube newbie. These types of comments used to really, really get under my skin, um, but now I just kind of like, oh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's that person expressing something that they're going, that's going on inside of them. It has nothing to do with me, and obviously I, I, I do have chronic illness. I do know what it's like. I live with this on a daily basis. Um, and then this stranger on the internet invalidating my experience means absolutely nothing. Um, so <laughs> what chronic illness do I have? Um, let's, uh, let's take a journey. Um, let's go back to uh, my childhood, my actually my birth, because um, I've actually had health issues since I was born. Um, I was born with a chest deformity called pectus excavatum, and I'll put a picture of little baby me on the screen right now so that you can <laughs> see what it looked like. Um, usually when I show this picture to people, they're like, oh my god, it's horrible. It's like, yeah, it got even worse when I was a teenager. <laughs> um, all my all throughout my whole childhood they told me and my parents that it was just a cosmetic issue um, that it was nothing to worry about um, but clearly the research back then was very young on this condition they didn't have all the information <laughs> apparently um, it was not just a cosmetic issue um, throughout my childhood it actually it made it really difficult for me to keep up with my peers in uh, sports, in gym class, and all all like physical activities. But then, as I like went through puberty and like my body changed and developed more, and I grew, this deformity became even worse. And I ended up having to have surgery to correct it because I could not breathe. Um, I could I could barely walk from my bedroom to the kitchen. Um, because I, I just could not breathe and I was having really bad chest pains. And so I had surgery to correct it and things, things were better, definitely better. I, <laughs> the surgery was really, really intense and awful for me, but I am grateful that I had it done. And um, it's called the NUST procedure is the name of the surgery. So in case you're watching this video and you have pectus excavatum and you're curious, it was the NUS procedure, um, which is the less invasive procedure option for this condition. Um, they say less invasive, but you're still basically breaking your sternum. Um, so it was really, really severe pain. It was awful, but um, I was able to breathe better after the surgery. Um, then several years, is it several years? I'm, I gotta tell you guys, I'm really bad at remembering dates and I'm sometimes bad at remember, remembering things in chronological order. So I have a tendency to talk in circles. So bear with me on this story. Um, so I had the surgery and then I started to experience chronic pain all over my body after this surgery. I got diagnosed with fibromyalgia 
And then in, in 2017, I started having a lot of like, a lot of dizziness and shortness of breath again. And I was like, what is going on? <laughs> um, and it actually got so bad to the point where I had to quit my job. And for three months in 2017, I was pretty much bed bound. I could only get up to go from my bed to the bathroom and back again. And that was it. That was, that was like the extent of my life for three months. I could not function. I was so dizzy standing up for even a few seconds. I would start to feel like I was going to pass out and, um, eventually got diagnosed with POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. I've also been diagnosed with joint hypermobility syndrome, also known as Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which kind of goes hand in hand with the pectus excavatum and the POTS. So like I said in the beginning, you never just have one diagnosis, you end up with a whole handful of them. Um, so all of these syndromes kind of go hand in hand. Um, but, let's see, see, now I'm losing my train of thought. See, this is what happens. Um, yes, so I got diagnosed with POTS. Um, and looking back, I can kind of like time travel <laughs> back into my teen years and recognize that I had symptoms of POTS during my teen years and like going up and down the steps at high school and not being able to like keep up with my peers when we would be running or like if it was hot and we were at cheer camp, like trying to keep up with all my peers and just feeling really lethargic and like having to take breaks um, during athletics because I would get like nauseous and stuff. So like all of these are symptoms of POTS. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's like, it's, it's been a thing for a while, but then in my, in my twenties, it just got, it just got really, really bad. I don't know what triggered it to get so severe. Um, but I'm grateful that it led to me getting diagnosed and now I know what the problem is. I can treat it more appropriately. Um, and a big, huge part of maintaining my health is yoga. Um, yoga and the copious amounts of salt water that I drink on a daily basis are the reason why I can sit here and talk to you um, without feeling like I'm going to pass out. <laughs> um, so yoga actually helped me to rebuild my strength, rebuild my stamina so that I can sit upright comfortably and I started doing just supine bed yoga practices so that I could rebuild that strength and gradually worked my way up to being able to sit upright and um, ultimately being able to do standing yoga practices. Um, so I actually have a whole training plan inside my Spoonie Yoga Studio, um, which is my membership program on my website. I'll leave a link in the description box below so you can check that out, but I have um, I actually have three different training plans, strength training plans that help you to get yourself from that bed bound supine life and into a space where you're able to actually sit upright and be able to tolerate that more. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, if you're watching this video and you also have POTS or even if you just have chronic fatigue and are bed bound right now and you're interested in that, I'll leave links in the description box below. Um, the training plans are based on the yoga practices that I did personally in order to be able to sit upright. So, um, yeah, I think, I think, I think that's everything. Um, along the way, I also... Um, got diagnosed with adrenal insufficiency and thyroid issues. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily related to everything else or if it was just a result. Like whenever we experience intense stress and our bodies are just under stress all the time, whenever you have chronic illness and chronic pain, all your hormones are going to get messed up because of that chronic stress. Like that's just that's the way it is. That's the way our bodies work. Um, so for a while we thought that I had Addison's disease and that my 
adrenals would not be able to function again without medication, but then lab work showed otherwise and I'm pretty stable with that right now. So um, yeah, the, the process of getting diagnosed with chronic illness is really frustrating. Sometimes you get misdiagnoses, sometimes things are really confusing, sometimes you don't get a diagnosis at all. Um, so if you're a person right now who's struggling with chronic illness and you don't have a diagnosis yet, you don't know what's going on, I just want you to know that I see you. I know how frustrating that is. Um, and just know that even though you don't have a label to put on your symptoms yet, they are still very real and they are still very worthy of attention and treatment. I think that's all for this video. Um, I hope that knowing that this is a thing that I struggle with and that I've experienced makes you feel maybe a little less alone. Um, Cause I've, I've been there before. I, I know what this journey is like. I know how frustrating it is. Um, so yeah, you're not alone and I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're a part of our community. Um, I wish you didn't have to go through that too, but I'm still, I'm glad you're here. And, um, yeah, if you want to leave me a comment below, if you want to share your journey with me, your personal journey, if you want to talk about the chronic illnesses that you're struggling with, if you want to leave a comment below and connect with other people in our community, um, please feel free to do that. And I think I'm going to go because it is really hot in here and I need to turn my air conditioner back on. <laughs>